שבוע טוב, הגות תבוך. The Baal Shem Tov found himself in a faraway place, in a desert. And suddenly, this gigantic frog appeared. It was the Gilgul, the reincarnation of a Talmid Chacham, a Torah scholar, that came back as a frog. Shavua Tov, Agut Tevoch, I am Rafael Rabinovich, and I am going to tell story number 10 of the Shibchi Abel Shem Tov, the title of which is Maise Betalmit Chacham, Shenit Galgel Betzfardea, the story of a Talmid Chacham, a Torah scholar, who came back in a different Gilgul, in a new incarnation, as a frog. Those who follow me remember last story the Baal Shem Tov was coming back from this underground tunnel passage to, that gets all the way to Eretz Israel, through which the tzaddikim, the righteous one, the righteous ones in the world of uh, Mashiach and the days of red, red, redemption will go to, to reach the land of Israel. The Baal Shem Tov stop upon crossing a swamp where in, through the small bridge or in the middle of the bridge, there was this uh, revolving sword that the uh, angels have to guard the entrance of um, Gan Eden. And therefore he realizes mortally dangerous to cross through this place and he started going back. And on his way back, he knows he's not there for no reason. Hashem knows why he is there. Vayomer Habal Shem Tov Eliboy. The Baal Shem Tov said to his heart, Obviously, certainly, I didn't come here with no reason. And on his way back, he met this frog. There are many versions to this story. There are at least three different versions to the story. There are many explanations. I will not stop for them. I will write them. There's a Hashem God willing in my Patreon, the uh, link in the description. Continues the author of the Shiv Hebel Shem Tov, Be'yesh Oimbrim. There are those who say that once the Rav, the Bal Shem Tov, went deep into the depth, the spiritual depths, and uh, went through a went for a meditation of three days and three nights and he lost awareness of his surroundings in his deep meditation and found himself after this in the middle of a big desert, far away from his place. And he was very surprised that when he realized, when he knew he is in this place, in this desert, and he obviously didn't come here for no reason. And as he was thinking this, came to him, this humongous, this gigantic frog, this Tzfardea frog. It was so big that he had a hard time telling what kind of creature this is. And the Baal Shem Tov asked, who are you? And the frog answered that he was a Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar, that he came back in this new Gilgul in this new reincarnation as a Tzfardea. Before printing the story, the Alter Rebbe told the first printer, Rabbi Israel Yafi, to include the following sentence. And then the Baal Shem Tov said, You are a Talmud Chacham. And through this Dibur, through these words, he elevated this, um, the soul of this uh, Talmud Chacham greatly. That's the addition the Alter Rebbe has to be put. The story continues, and then he tells the Baal Shem Tov that he has been in this Gilgul for Tav Kuv Shanim, for 500 years. There was a time when the Ariya Kadosh, Rabbi Tzach Luria, blessed be the memory of the Tzadik, he did a Tikkun, he corrected, he redeemed all the souls, all the Neshamos, but he was exiled to a faraway place where no one would ever pass by to prevent him from receiving a tikkun. 
So he was spared the, the, the tikkun, the, the redemption. His soul was this faraway desert. The Baal Shem Tov asked him, what was your pesha? What was your crime? So the frog replied that once he disdained Natila's Yudayim, washing of the hands, and did not wash his hands the proper way. I don't know by the expression if it means he didn't wash at all or he did it without, without thinking, without you know, paying attention to the details. The point is he begins with this. Not important. And so the Satan raised a charge against him in the court of heaven, an accusation. But the Satan was told this is not enough, he's not guilty enough for one transgression. But, given that Aveda, Goderes, Aveda, a transgression brings about another transgression, if the Satan could make him fall for another one, this would be added to the Heshbon of the first one, the, the, the counting to make his case. But, if he will remember Hashem and he would repent, he would go through the right path and do Tshuva, then not only would not not be not fall in the second transgression but the first one would be clear of we, we clean up and so the satan brought him the temptation to test him test him with another transgression and the man did not stand the test he fell for it and then a second time and then a third time and so until he transgressed almost the entire Torah. And there was a psak, there was a sentencing up in Shamaim that now even his tshuva, even his repentance would not be accepted. Remember that he is a Talmud Chacham. He is a Torah scholar. He knows what he's doing. And as he is aware of what he's doing and he's doing it, now it's much, much more severe. Now, if he would go and knock in Sharit Shub in the gates of repentance, if he would really come with an honest heart to repent, his repentance, his his Shuba would be accepted. As is known that there was a bus call, there was a, a voice that came from heaven, is described in, in uh, Tanakh. Shuvu Banim Shavavim. The the children of Israel who return, who repent and turn back to Hashem, they will be accepted. The Gemara in Chagiga, Tesvav Aleph, says, Shubo vanim shobevin chutz me'acher. Yes, those who have lost their way will return with Shuba except for Acher. Acher is a man who was a dictator in Chacham, who knowingly became an apicorus, a heretic, and thus his Shuba is not accepted, his repentance is not accepted because he knows how he was transgressing, he knows the meaning of his transgressions, and he was aware of what he was doing, thus his judgment is much more severe. Continues with the story, the punishment for the Talmud Chacham of our story was that he will be exiled to a faraway place. Still, if he had knocked in the gates of repentance, if he had done Shuba with a true heart, he would have been accepted. There is nothing that stands in front of the Shuba. And so is explained by the Alter Rebbe at the beginning of uh, Likute Amarim Tanya. But the Satan incited this man. He became a shikor, he became a drunkard. And then he was no longer disposed to meditate, to think over and to do tshuva. And he went on and on to commit all the transgressions of this world. Since the first of his transgressions, of his sins, was to give away, take away the importance of Natilas Yadaim, when he died, he was condemned to come back in another, another Gilgul as a Tzfardea, as a frog. A 
frog spends its life with uh, feet on the water. It's always on the water. But he would be sent far away to a place that no human beings ever go by. So that no Jew would ever pass by and, and say a bracha. Or even have a good kavana in his think, in his thought. They would separate the precious from the evil. That itself would bring a tikkun. Since the Valshemta was here, the Valshemta saw what happened. He did a tikkun for the neshama of the star Chacham. And the neshama finally went up. And the frog was dead. And so is the story different versions of the story and all the explanations. This Rosh Hashem I will write in my Patreon. Um, I am in the process of translating all these stories into Spanish, as I think the book has never been translated accurately in, in its entirety to Spanish. So those who want to uh, contribute, both for the effort of making the translation, of telling the stories, Motsi Chavez, and for the publication, the costs that will will be involved in it, please contribute, subscribe in my Patreon. Please give me a like, subscribe, share the stories, tell the stories, listen to the stories of the Baal Shem Tov. Come back next week. Shavua Tov, a good evoch.